Welcome to Electron Online and here is another example on how to verify an identity. Now this one might be a little bit more challenging. So here we have something that, oh, you look at that, we have a secant of x divided by secant of x minus tangent of x equals the secant of x times secant of x plus tangent of x. It almost looks impossible that those two could be equal to each other. But at least on the left side you have a secant of x, you have a secant of x on the right side, you probably want to leave those there, so somehow this must be equal to this. So this in the denominator must equal that in the numerator. Hmm. So in order to do that, my thinking is I have to turn this into a fraction because when I divide by a fraction, the same as multiplying by its inverse. So my strategy is turn this into a fraction so I can then write it in the numerator. And so I'm going to write this as the secant of x, oop, and I always want to write this as an exponent here, the secant of x divided by, write this as, in terms of sines and cosines and see what we get. So that would be 1 over the cosine of x minus the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. Now notice that we have a common denominator, so we can write it over common denominator. So this can be written as the secant of x divided by, uh, let's see here, 1 minus the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. And now since I have the denominator written as a fraction, we can now write that as a multiplication multiplying times its inverse. So this can be written as the secant of x times the cosine of x divided by 1 minus the sine of x. All right. So what we're going to do here is multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So multiply this times 1 plus the sine of x divided by 1 plus the sine of x. So if we do that, we get the secant of x times in the numerator, we have the cosine of x multiplied times 1 plus the sine of x. And in the denominator, we end up with uh, 1 minus the sine square of x. Now the reason why we did that is because 1 minus the sine square of x actually can be written as the cosine square of x. So this can be written as the secant of x, I still have my secant of x over there, times the quantity, the cosine of x, times 1 plus the sine of x, all divided by the cosine square of x. Okay, now we're getting closer, because now what I can do is I can cancel these out, and so this now becomes the secant of x, times 1 plus the sine of x, all divided by the cosine of x. And now we can divide the denominator into the numerator, so this can now be written as a secant of x times 1 over the cosine of x plus the sine of x over the cosine of x. And then if we use the identities, we can now write this as a secant of x times the cosecant of x plus the tangent of x. And then if you look at that, you can realize that this is exactly the same as the right side over there. So again, We've shown that that is indeed a correct identity. The left side did equal the right side. So it took us a little while to get there, and it might, you might get sidetracked and go different directions and not end up here. But that's okay. If you don't, try something different. Again, multiplying by the conjugate to get rid of a, a negative or a positive sign in the denominator is actually not a bad way to go. And notice that whenever you can latch onto something that you already have, just stay it, keep it because eventually that's something that you'll need in your final answer and then use the identities that you have available to keep changing the expression until it looks close to what you're looking for. That's how we do that.